Brianna, thanks very much. Happening now, an impassioned new plea from Trayvon Martin's mother, begging the country to use her broken heart and keep what happened to her son from happening to any other child. Plus, we're live inside North Korea right now, just ahead, a rare first-hand look at how this mysterious nation is celebrating its own 21st century brand of socialism. And more from the woman at the center of Anthony Weiner's latest sexting scandal, uh, what she's now saying about his wife. I'm very empathetic, and I, I feel for her. I feel terrible that I'm part of that. I'm Wolf Blitzer. You're in the Situation Room. I feel that I was forcefully included in Trayvon Martin's death. I carry him on my back. I'm hurting as much as Trayvon Martin's mom is. Because there's no way that any mother should feel that pain. An emotional message for Trayvon Martin's mother from the only minority on the all-female jury in George Zimmerman's murder trial. The juror, known as B29, uh, also known as Maddie, is the second on the panel to speak out since the verdict and tells ABC's Good Morning America she fought to the end to find Zimmerman guilty of second-degree murder, but ultimately the law didn't allow it. The notion uh, came as a blow to Trayvon Martin's mother, Sabrina Fulton, who made an impassioned plea in Philadelphia today for a change in the justice system. Let's bring in our crime and justice correspondent, Joe Johns. He's got the very latest for us. Joe, uh, what happened? Well, if you can certainly say this was a powerful moment in Philadelphia today, as the mother of Trayvon Martin spoke slowly and painfully about her loss and her broken heart. The mother of Trayvon Martin gave a deeply emotional speech. At times, I feel like I'm a broken vessel. At times, I don't know if I'm going or coming. Sabrina Fulton talked about her dead son and life without him and the not guilty verdict for the man who shot him. She blames the stand your ground law in Florida for the outcome. Wrap your mind around no prom for Trayvon. No high school graduation for Trayvon. No college for Trayvon. No grandkids coming from Trayvon. All because of a law. A law that has prevented the person who shot and killed my son to be held accountable and to pay for this awful crime. Ms. Fulton appeared before the National Urban League meeting in a swirl of fresh controversy after one of the jurors in the Zimmerman case told ABC she owed the Martin family an apology. George Zimmerman got away with murder, but you can't get away from God. And at the end of the day, he's going to have a lot of questions and answers he has to deal with. The law couldn't prove it. We just have to, to believe in the Lord that he's... If he's asked to pay, he, he will pay. In a remark, Sabrina Fulton did not talk about what the juror said, but had issued a statement earlier saying, it's devastating for my family to hear the comments from juror B-29, comments which we already knew in our hearts to be true. And she issued a larger plea for others to take on her cause. My message to you is, please use my story. Please use my tragedy. Please use my broken heart to say to yourself, we cannot let this happen to anybody else's child. Trayvon Martin's family has started a foundation in his memory. They say one of their goals is to fight against stand-your-ground laws that have been enacted in more than half the states. Very strong words from Trayvon's mom there. All right. <clears throat> Joe, thanks very much. Uh, let's bring in our legal panel to talk a little bit more about all of this. Joining us, our CNN senior legal analyst, Jeffrey Tubin. Also joining us, the criminal defense attorney, Paige Pate, and the former federal prosecutor, Tanya Miller. Uh, Jeffrey, let me play a little bit more of this uh, interview that ABC News had with this juror. For myself, he's guilty because the evidence shows he's guilty. He's guilty of killing Trayvon Martin. But we couldn't prove that 
intentionally he killed him. And that's the way that the law was read to me. Jeffrey, could the prosecution have do done a better job with this whole issue of intent? You know, jury instructions are hard for anyone to understand. I've heard them a million times, and I find them hard to understand. But it's quite clear that Maddie, the juror, at least now, doesn't have a clear understanding of what was required, because that was not the law as she described it. And in other parts of the interview, I think she, she garbled the law a little bit. One thing you could have said the prosecution d could have done is, in its summation, talk more about the jury ins instructions, explain why the elements of the crime uh, were met by the prosecution here. Might have made a difference, might not have, but clearly this juror, at least at this point, does not have much of an understanding for what was really required to find, uh, Trey Mart uh, to find George Zimmerman guilty. Uh, Tanya, let me uh, get you to react to what uh, Mark O'Mara, the defense attorney for George Zimmerman, posted a little while ago. Uh, uh, why Zimmerman juror B-29 is a model juror. That's what he entitled his statement. People may disagree with self-defense laws, but a juror's job is not to decide what a law should be. Her job is to apply the facts presented at trial to the laws they are instructed about. This is the essence of what we seek in a juror. The ability to use one's common sense, apply the law to the facts, agree not to be swayed by sympathy or emotion, no matter how loudly it's argued by the prosecutors, and decide a lawful and fair verdict. Uh, do you agree that uh, juror B-29 was a, quote, model juror? Well, I don't know if she was a model juror or not. I certainly think that she approached the process in good faith. I don't think there's any reason to doubt that she did that. But I think Jeffrey makes a good point. What is really clear when we hear uh, this juror speak is that she really misunderstood the law. She did not appropriately apply the law to the facts because she didn't understand it. And the reason why she didn't understand it could be because she wasn't really given that roadmap by the prosecution, by the prosecution team during trial. As a homicide prosecutor for many years, we were taught to spend a significant amount of time talking to the jury about the law, giving them each and every point that they needed to go back into that jury room and argue uh, for, for your position as a prosecutor. And I just don't think she was equipped to do that in this case. You agree, Paige? I agree 100 percent. I mean, we have to remember that this juror went back into the jury room ready to find Zimmerman guilty. The problem became that she could not convince the other jurors and could not hold her own ground when they started arguing the law to her. And the reason she couldn't is because the prosecution did not give her that roadmap, did not talk about the law in their closing arguments like the defense did. And the defense did it very effectively. Emotion is important, but you're not going to persuade a jury in closing arguments. You have to give them arguments to use on your behalf back in the jury room. Was the issue in t of intent, Jeffrey, the same uh, as far as second degree, convicting someone of second degree murder and or convicting someone of manslaughter? No, it's entirely different. Uh, you know, manslaughter um, does, requires a, a level of almost negligence, a, a very low level uh, of, of intent, whereas uh, second degree murder in the Florida statute requires a level of almost hatred. So, I mean, the, the level of intent is almost entirely, is entirely different. And um, so that, that was one level of, of misunderstanding that, that Maddie reflected in her comments. It may be that she just didn't understand, you know, she couldn't recite it a couple weeks later, or maybe she never understood it. So who do you blame, Tanya, for the uh, confusion surrounding the jury instructions? Well, part of it is just the nature of jury instructions. I mean, as Jeffrey alluded to, they are very confusing. As lawyers, it sometimes takes us a while to master uh, what they mean and to translate that into normal layman's terms for a jury to understand. Uh, so in part, it's just the nature of jury instructions. But as the prosecutor, you have the burden of proof. You have to convince that jury that you have uh, pr provided evidence um, to each element of the offense beyond a reasonable doubt. To that end, you have to give the jurors a clear layman's understanding of what the law is so that they can go back there and apply it to the facts. So I think there's a the, the defense did a really good job. Um, of explaining the law as it relates to their theory of the case. The prosecutors gave a powerful closing argument, but left out uh, a little bit of, of detail as it related to the law. And I think the law just is confusing for lay people without that help. And, and Paige, let me uh, uh, 
uh, play this other little clip from this juror, what she told uh, ABC. Watch this. I'm thinking to myself, did I go the right way? Did I go the wrong way? I know I went the right way because by the law and the way it was followed is the way I went. But if I would have used my heart, I probably would have went a hung jury. And, and believe it with all my heart because I do, I do have kids. She was the, uh, the only juror of the six women on the jury who started off right after the uh, trial with a, a, a guilty verdict as far as second degree murder is concerned. She wound up many hours later uh, not guilty, an, an acquittal. Uh, how unusual is that to go all the way from second degree murder, forget about that, forget about manslaughter, and wind up not guilty? It doesn't happen often, but it's not rare. Many times, once a juror gets back into the jury room, they are going to be persuaded by the other jurors. And that's especially true if most of them are on the other side. And that's why jury selection is so incredibly important. And when you had this particular jury, this composition of folks, uh, I think the verdict that came out, not guilty, was in some but ways. But remember, Paige, uh, and let me let Jeffrey weigh in on this as well, when they first went into that room after all the hours and hours of, of testimony, uh, there was, it was basically three to three. Three for uh, not guilty, but two in, uh, a guilty uh, for manslaughter, one guilty, this woman who spoke to ABC of second degree murder. So the debate was only just beginning. It was, Wolf, but there's really nothing unusual or certainly nothing inappropriate about that kind of vote initially, then one that changes. That's why they call it deliberation. I mean, we could have a system where each juror pushes a button and, and, and you have a vote right at the end. But the idea behind deliberation is that the jurors talk to each other and listen to each other and, and, and sometimes become persuaded. So, you know, in my experience talking to jurors, uh, it's often that there is a non-unanimous reaction when you first uh, go back into the jury box. But after listening to colleagues, they, they, they usually, not always, but usually come to a unanimous agreement. And that's what happened here. Jeffrey Tubin, Paige Pay, Tanya Miller. Uh, guys, thanks very much for joining us. Uh, lots more to discuss, and we'll do it down the road. When we come